Yeah. All right. All let's... right. So I'm gonna move into my last game for mechanics. Uh, World of Final Fantasy. I feel I, I would feel remiss if I covered a RPG episode and did not have at least one Final Fantasy entry in there. So <laughs> here's my obligation. Um, so World of Final Fantasy, which was actually probably the least known Final Fantasy. I know some people are probably looking at this trailer right now and they're like, wait, what? When did this game come out? Uh, it came out in 2016 in October. It is published by Square Enix and it is available on PC, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PS Vita. However, if you want the upgraded version Magus, that is not available on the Vita. That is only available on other systems. So. Uh, World of Final Fantasy is its own unique story. Basically, what happens is you play as a brother and sister team uh, and, named Rain and Vaughn, if I remember correctly. And basically, what happens is they wake up one day and they're going through their routine and they suddenly realize, why are we here? Why are we going through this routine? Like, literally, we're in a coffee shop. Nobody exists in this city except for us. So they kind of wake up from this kind of trance that they've been in for a while. And it turns out that there's some stuff going out in the world and that they need to basically uh, solve where did everybody go, what's going on, and explore this world. And of course, all different parts of the world are from previous Final Fantasy games. Uh, you're going to meet multiple characters from previous Final Fantasy games. You're going to be meeting monsters from previous Final Fantasy games. So the mechanics of it that make it really interesting is that this game is kind of a... Pokemon got to catch them all kind of deal. So what happens is you have your characters and your main characters can go between two sizes. They can go through what's called a giant and what's called a Lilliputian, uh, which basically plays into in the game. This allows you to do certain things. For instance, giants is a taller character. You can see here you have lots of short little characters um, and you can see the main characters are quite a bit taller. When they're taller, they can reach things that they couldn't reach when they're small. So, for example, they can walk up to a house and pick up a treasure chest that's on the roof. When they're smaller, they can fit in places that they wouldn't be able to fit in normally. This also comes into play in combat. Now, when this game came out, Final Fantasy uh, VII Remake had already been announced, and people there was a big debate on whether it should be active time battle like a traditional Final Fantasy, specifically Final Fantasy VII itself, or if it should move into this action-oriented, uh, which they ended up kind of going with. And a lot of traditionalists wanted that active time battle system. A lot of newer, younger players were saying that a turn-based is dead, it's not fun, nobody likes it, it should be done away with and nobody should use it anymore. This game actually uses that traditional system and it works really, really well. So I would say, just look at the game like this or Persona to say that, yeah, turn-based games definitely still have a place. But the way it works is basically you can have up to six party members at a time, but in a way they can actually act as two party members. And the way that works is actually uh, when you collect the monsters in the game, they're called mirages and they're kind of like the Pokemon of this game. When you collect a mirage, it comes in one of three sizes, large, medium, or small and you can stack your mirages so a medium can sit on top of a large and a small can sit on top of a medium so you can have a tower and as i said before your characters can be either that large or medium size themselves so what happens is is when you do this you actually combine aspects of all three of the parts of the tower so their hit points are added together uh, access any kind of magic that one has access to the whole tower has access to uh, any kind of in, uh, elemental weaknesses or strengths they will apply to the tower so for example if you have and part of your tower is magic resist uh, is fire resistant and the other two are either neutral or also fire resistant you're going to have a fire resistant tower if you have one that's fire resistant, but you also have one that is fire weak, so they are, you know, so you have a fire mirage and an ice mirage, put them in the tower together, and now fire just basically does normal damage. So there's a lot of kind of picking what you want when you create your towers and which characters want to go with what, because you could either supplement strengths or you could, uh, you know, just really kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, counteract their weaknesses um, so it is kind of interesting and then also when you collect the mirages 
Uh, some mi mirages, actually similar to Pokemon, have multiple forms. Uh, however, unlike Pokemon, where you basically just evolve through your forms, these mirages, as you level them up, you can unlock new nodes within them, which will unlock new spells. It'll increase their defense or offense or whatever. But once you reach a certain point and you've unlocked them to a certain level, you can then unlock other forms. And then that one, you know, so for example, if you have, say, Ifrit, which is a traditional Final Fantasy summon, Ifrit himself is a large base uh, that you could use. However, there's a smaller version of Ifrit. And once you get your Ifrit to a certain level, you could actually devolve him into the smaller version of it. He still has access to all the things that he had in his previous form. Uh, but now uh, he's smaller, so instead of making him the base, if you have another monster like a behemoth that you want to be the base, you can still keep your Ifrit, but just move him in as a medium-sized uh, mirage as opposed to a larger mirage. So this is actually really, really interesting. Unfortunately, this trailer doesn't really get to show you how too much of the combat. You see a little bit of it. Um, but yeah, it's just really interesting in that it's kind of a build-your-own-character in a way. Uh, and there is some strategy in that uh, enemies will also have their uh, towers and you can kind of, certain attacks will destabilize the tower. You'll start start seeing them kind of wobbling back and forth. Uh, and then eventually they might even fall over. And then of course you can attack the individual parts of the tower which can disrupt them. Uh, so yeah, I think it's kind of an interesting system. I've never seen it used anywhere else. Um, if I'm being entirely honest, I'm not sure if it would work anywhere else. But it works really, really well for this game. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I, I'm very curious because, I mean, this looks really cool. I, I've got a few questions. Um, the sort of, like, uh, you know Funko Pops, right? Yes. So some of the characters sort of, like, have, like, a Funko look. Are there actual Funko Pops of these Final Fantasy? Uh... World of Final Fantasy characters? There's definitely Funko Pops of the Final Fantasy characters out there. I don't know if they're specifically... I don't think they're specifically designed after this game. Okay. Um, and I don't think that this game is specifically designed after them. I think that's kind of a coincidence. I think here, the reason they did the smaller characters with the big head, I think that's more of a uh, tribute to the older Final Fantasy sprites that we saw like back in Final Fantasy VI before. Uh, the, the old... So back they had that kind of chibi look to them with the giant head and the small bodies. Uh, just because that looked really, really good on, say, Super Nintendo, stuff like that. So this is kind of a throwback to those older games. But yeah, I, I think that you they do have them, but I don't think they're specific to uh, Final Fantasy, World of Final Fantasy. I think they're more like, oh, this is the Final Fantasy VIII Funko Pops or the Final Fantasy VII Funko Pops. So, um, so, so you mentioned this is out on PC, but uh, as far as PlayStation goes, do you know what the cost is? Not off the top of my head. Uh, I'd have to look it up on the PlayStation Store. It's been out, like I said, since 2016, so it shouldn't be that much. It does go on sale from time to time. Uh, however, much like Final Fantasy 15, which you had the original game, and then later on they came out with the Final Fantasy 15 Royal, which was kind of an expanded version of it, and it had expansions in it. Uh, this similar, you have World of Final Fantasy and then you have World of Final Fantasy Magus. And Magus is the expanded version. Uh, so for example, in World of Final Fantasy, you do not have access to uh, any of the Final Fantasy 15 characters. They're just not in there because I think this game came out prior to Final Fantasy 15. Uh, however, in Magus, the Final Fantasy 15 characters make an appearance. Uh, you have access to more summons. So in the traditional Final Fantasy games, you have summons like Shiva, Ifrit, Ramu. Here, all those characters are uh, mirages, but you do still have summons, but now the summons are other Final Fantasy characters. So you can summon Cloud or Squall or Lightning, um, which coincidentally all have weather names. But uh, <laughs> you can summon all these characters. Um, uh, so they're, they're the new versions of the summons. So, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, um, for PC users, I just looked up the price. If you're interested, it's uh, 780 Taiwanese dollars on Steam as of a few seconds ago, or about 25 US. Um, I'm actually thinking of picking this up. I've always wa I told you I've always wanted to play a Final Fantasy game. And uh, for someone like me, do you think this is a good place to start? Because I've never played any Final Fantasies. Is this a good place to start? Or would you like say, hey, don't do this just yet. Play something else first. Um, okay, so I'll say this. World of Final Fantasy, one of the flaws of it is that 
for a long time, the first, I would say the first half of the game, at least, if not more than the first half of the game, is pretty much rides on nostalgia. Basically, the whole thing is, you know, you're meeting these characters from other Final Fantasy, other Final Fantasy games, and if you haven't played those games, you might not really understand the significance of some of these things. You can definitely understand the story. You'll, you'll follow everything. Um, but it's one of those things, for example, where you're fighting the ghost train, and if you've played previous Final Fantasies, you're like, oh, the ghost train. This is, oh my god, this is so great. And if you have not played the previous Final Fantasies, you're like, why is this train a ghost? I don't understand. Can trains die? So <laughs> there is definitely, uh, for somebody who hasn't played previous Final Fantasies, and I wouldn't even say just one, for somebody who hasn't been playing the Final Fantasy franchise for a while, the first half of the game, you're really not going to get much out of it because they are basically just kind of riding on nostalgia. Now, that said, the second half of the game, pretty much any once you reach the Crystal Tower and after, that's when it really becomes its own game and the main characters really start to develop because prior to that, they're basically just vessels for the player to meet Final Fantasy characters. Um, they don't have a lot of personality on their own. They don't really do a lot on their own. But the second half of the game is really when their world is, it, it establishes that this is their world and this is why they are important to it. And this is what's really happening. So if you do, I would say you, you, you do have to play the whole game. If you're a game hopper and you're playing the first half, you're not going to get too much out of it because it's really the second act or even the third act to that really you start getting the story out of it. Okay. Uh, however... If you are the kind of person that is looking forward to playing other Final Fantasy games, uh, this might be a good introduction that you know all these characters' names so that when you see them in the other games, you're like, oh, okay. And this is also going to be a good introduction into, say, the monsters uh, that you're commonly going to see, you know, Behemoths, Sagahin, um, you know, those sort of things. So when you see those, and then, you, or is it uh, Emirant, the, the, the big one eyed monster? Uh, so. Playing this, you're going to have an idea of all those. And because you're using them as your characters, you're like, oh, this one has fire based, this one's ice based. So when you go in back to another older Final Fantasy and you see something, you're like, oh, yeah, I already know what that is. I already know how to deal with it because, you know, I've gotten a lot of background on that one creature here. So I wouldn't recommend it as an entry level to a Final Fantasy unless uh, you are the kind of person that's really like, you know what, I really want to go through and play all the Final Fantasies uh, and having that in mind first and foremost. Okay, okay. I will definitely keep that in mind. Uh, I was going to add this to my Steam Bullish and then I'll just wait and uh, wait for the appropriate Final Fantasy to come around on Steam and then I'll pick that up. Yeah. Well, Final Fantasy 16 is coming out soon, so... Oh, um, relatively soon. It's been announced. So. <laughs> Maybe that is the thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, as far as who is this for specifically, I would say this is definitely for fans of Final Fantasy who've been fans for a long time. Um, if you're if you haven't been a Final Fantasy fan for a long time, you're probably not going to get that much out of it. But if you're a really old, especially older, old school Final Fantasy fans like myself, are probably going to get the most out of it. Uh, newer Final Fantasy fans are probably not going to even get that much out of it. I would say people who are fans of like the Final Fantasies of the 90s, they're the target audience. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. <laughs> yeah. 